Now this is Middleton Sands, the perfect stomping ground for pickups. Now it's a very interesting time because as you'll likely know Mitsubishi have pulled out the UK market. Now that leaves the gap wide open from the L200. Well we've got two contenders, the Isuzu D-Max Blade and the Sanyong Musso Rhino. Let's get to grips with them. Yes, we did have an Isuzu Blade maybe two years ago. But it's the perfect contender, isn't it? The L200 is one of those vehicles that farmers believed in. You know, it had a high ride height, it had a diesel engine, it was very powerful, torquey, and very capable. Now the Suzu D-Max is pretty much that. They've got a decent ride height. Yeah, granted, that does not have the same wading depth as this. It's actually 300 mil or 350, dependent on where you read it. And this is well over 600, which means this is gonna to appeal to a farmer more for that reason. However, that excels in another way. It can tow three and a half ton and carry just over 1.1 as well on the bed. Now, here's the interesting thing. It carries that simultaneously. So you can tow your three and a half ton trailer and carry your full load in the back as well. There's no other pickup like it. This, you can either tow three and a half ton or you can carry your one ton in the back. Style-wise, well, this is an adventure pickup from Isuzu. And the Musso Rhino, in my opinion, looks quite understated, whereas this looks more raw. Granted, it's not XTR raw, but it still looks more raucous than that. Especially with those LED laser lights. You've got them there, and you've also got them in the front grille as well. Now, load capacity, as we mentioned, the Musso Rhino, yes, that's the one that's gonna be carrying most. You could tow the car you're gonna restore with the Musso Rhino and carry the engine gearbox, ancillaries, and pretty much anything else you want in the back as well. Whereas with this, you can either tow the car or carry the engine. The other thing is, this has a soft opening tailgate. And the Rhino doesn't. They both look very smart and you can get pretty much the same accessories for both. You could get a tonneau cover, you can get the sport bar as well. Both come with alloy wheels. The Isuzu has keyless entry, whereas the Rhino doesn't, but you get keyless go in both. Now, just from looking at both of them, you can tell that the Isuzu does have a touch bigger on the wheel size. And they're both running road tires as well, but they're both very capable both four-wheel drive, and they both have a rotary dial to select that. And we're starting to see rotary dials being used more and more in things like for pickups as well. And I think you'll agree with me in saying that they both look very smart, and they're both in red as well. It's amazing what you get when you request a couple of pickups. Engine-wise, 2.2 turbo diesel and a 1.9 turbo diesel. Both models come with a six-speed automatic gearbox, but that has driving modes. But we'll get to that later. Now, that is definitely gonna be a touch louder because it is an older engine. Yes, it's been brought to Euro 6 and it's very dependable, it's torquey, and it's exactly what you want from your D-Max. But refinement's not really there in the cabin when you're under load. And here's the interesting thing, it now offers 42 to the gallon. I won't get anywhere near that because I can't drive economically for um, all the tea in China. Safety wise, both of them are very well kitted out. We've got airbags, we've got curtain side airbags. There's even airbags in the rear pillars as well. Now, this doesn't have as much tech as this. And that's because this has got things like cross traffic monitoring. You also have blind spot detection in the mirrors as well. This doesn't. But the thing you have to consider is, this is quite an old model now, and we're starting to see the new designs now. So we're thinking maybe 2021, or that would have been the case without C19. So who knows? Now, yes, it's going to be me walking around talking about a couple of things, but there will be some off-roading as well. So you'll get to see what both of these are like off-roading. 
Let's have a look inside. As I mentioned, Keyless Sentry. It's a pickup, so hard plastics, abundant. And lovely padded area here. Not the biggest cup holder, which isn't ideal if you've got your two litre mug of tea like Annabelle would. <laughs> Blade kick plates and lovely seats as well. Perforated leather and the stitching. And the stitching matches the steering wheel as well. Now, the one thing I have noticed is these bits could be a little more supportive because when you're off-road, you do bounce around a fair bit. The rest of it is self-explanatory. Decent sized infotainment screen and a rotary dial to operate things like air conditioning and that kind of thing. Six speed automatic, there's your shifter. You've also got shift lock as well in case you get in some really sticky mud. Overall, it's very comfortable. It's nice and roomy as well. Uh, this is a manual seat and in the Rhino, it's electric. In the rear, yes, all my gubbins are in there for filming. That even keeps the gimbal nice and safe on the floor. But as you can see, decent footwell. Nice and comfortable seats and pull down armrest. And that's in both vehicles. A comfortable vehicle for four people. Rhino. Nice padded area for your arm and a nice spacious cabin as well. It's laid out completely differently to the Isuzu. For a start, you've got the infotainment system and it's integrated into the system with a rotary dial for volume and some shortcut buttons. Under that, your air conditioning. And that's a completely different system yet again. But they are different manufacturers, so it makes sense. Try and keep your vehicle unique. Now where this excels is things like this. Soft touches stitching on the dashboard and soft touches as well. You do find hard plastics, but it's bound to be. It's a pickup. It's built for workmen. Granted, this one, you could probably take home to see your mother because she's not quite as raucous as Mr. D-Max over there. Refinement wise, it makes perfect sense though because this is built on the Rexton platform. So that's an SUV. So what San Yong have done is integrated SUV characteristics into a pickup. And that's the thing that staggers us. It towed our Mercedes quite easily on a three axle trailer and that's about 1.7 tons and we didn't even realize we were towing it and we could have carried way more remarkable six speed automatic gearbox and some power ports there now one thing is both have old school handbrakes perfect for off-roading and look another rotary dial this time two high four high and four low but no shift lock and if you've noticed, yes, these seats have higher bolsters. So yeah, more supportive. Both have privacy glass and yes, hard plastics in the back in both as well. Decent sized door bin. That's the other thing about the Musa. You've got a far bigger door bin on this than the D-Max. Very well trimmed, decent foot room and leg room. And look, it looks like the Queen of Sheba has been sat in the front seat because it's literally in the back. Pull down armrest, very supportive seats and airbags all around. Another vehicle that's perfect for taking your crew on an adventure. And yes, one engine for that, one engine for this. Gearboxes, as I mentioned, automatics, we can get manuals as well. And our Rhino, if you've noticed, doesn't have a tonneau cover, but it does have a bed liner. So they're available for both vehicles as well. Both look really cool. They've both got sporty roof rails. I think this would look far better with a sport bar, but that's me. Chunky side steps. One thing the Muso and the Rhino have over the D-Max is you have doors that cover the sills. So, all together, no, no more muddy, muddy trousers. trousers. Now I mentioned wading depth before, and the ground clearance is also higher on this Suzu as well. I think it's about 20 centimeters on this and uh, quite a bit more on that. You've also got underbody protection for the engine as well. Now I've shown you around both pickups. Here's the driving side of it. Enjoy. The four wheel drive just makes it effortless to bomb around here. It's brilliant. I love off-roading in one of these.
Good, clear. Stop. Stop. That's fine. Do it. Slow down. As you can see, both are rather impressive off-road. And I think it boils down to which manufacturer do you want? I mean, granted, both pretty much fill the L200 gap, but do you want refinement or do you want raw power? And do you want a weight in depth or do you want to carry bigger and heavier loads.